Hello, I'm Tracy Finch and I'm Professor of Healthcare and Implementation Science at Northumbria University and I lead on implementation science and knowledge mobilization in Northeast and North Cumbria NIHR ARC. Today, I'd like to give you a brief snapshot of normalization process theory as an approach that can be helpful in improving health and social care through enabling us to better understand the work involved in improvement activity. Normalization process theory or MPT explains successful and unsuccessful implementation processes with reference to the extent to which practices become routinely embedded in practice. So it aims to address the question of what needs to happen for a change in practice to become routine or normal. MPT is a theory because it focuses on the explanation of what influences implementation outcomes. The best way to think about MPT though, is as a way of thinking about implementation problems that focuses on firstly, how interventions do or can become part of everyday practice. And secondly, how different groups of people work together to achieve this. So for the MPT, the overriding question is, what work needs to be done here? From the perspective of MPT, four kinds of work need to happen. Firstly, there needs to be coherence. So it has to make sense to all of those involved. Secondly, cognitive participation is key. This is about people being engaged and investing in the process of improvement. Thirdly, people need to act collectively. They need to act together. So they need to be able to do the necessary work to make it happen in practice. And we all know that interventions have unexpected effects that need to be managed as they happen. Finally, and because implementing and embedding changes in practice require sustained effort over time, those involved need to be able to appraise and act on the observed effects of their efforts. Or in MPT terms, they need to engage in a process of reflexive monitoring in order to normalize those new practices. So at its most basic level, MPT is all about the work. What is it? Who does it? How does it happen? And why does it happen like that? So what can MPT help with? An example of how MPT might be used to develop an intervention or plan its implementation can be seen by the MPT toolkit that can be found on our website and, and do see the accompanying reading list uh, for that link. The toolkit has 16 questions uh, for addressing each of the MPT constructs. These questions can be scored by moving the bar across from not at all to completely. To show some examples, Question 11 on collective action prompts a discussion about how work is allocated under a new assessment pathway. The comment shows that not all staff working with the pathway have acquired the necessary skills yet to make full assessments. Discussion about question 15 from the reflexive monitoring construct highlights that staff don't currently have access to any feedback about the impact of their efforts um, and that addressing this might improve engagement with the new process. What's key here is not the scoring as such, but the thought processes, analysis and discussion that the items generate around an implementation activity. There are different ways to use it. So for example, it could frame a group discussion involving professionals with different roles in relation to the intervention, or it could be answered for different groups separately and then compared. It could be used early on in the implementation process for planning or later on when evaluating or reflecting on reasons for failure or success. In research, MPT can be used with qualitative and quantitative studies and has also been used to explore and synthesize data in systematic reviews. In all approaches, MPT acts as a sensitizing device to ask questions in relation to the four constructs, enabling understanding of mechanisms of that change process. It also guides data collection and analysis to focus on the perspectives of the different roles involved in an implementation activity. Please see the accompanying further reading list for examples of papers that describe the different ways that it's used in research. These are the top tips that I'd suggest 
in using MPT. MPT isn't focused on changing the behavior of individuals. Although behavior is important in any implementation process, MPT helps to make sense of how people work together to implement change within the context that they're working in. So it helps us to focus on how the work of implementation happens across a range of people, situations, times and places. As a theory rather than a method, MPT has some flexibility in how it can be used. So making it at home with your particular project is key to it working for you. MPT is a theory of implementation, but it's not a theory of everything. And it approaches the problem of implementation in line with its own focus. In implementation and improvement research, it can and should be used alongside other approaches. Thank you very much for listening.